Well, hello there. This is Vitriol's a Chess Noob, learning and having fun with chess. I've recently played a little bit less chess on chess.com, and for this channel, I'm still going to be producing content, but I'm going to slow down the production a little bit and aim for some higher quality content. I'll let me know in the comments whether you liked this video. Now, the last two videos, sorry, last two games that I played on chess.com were both of the Yanish Gambit, a really good response by Black against the Rui Lopez opening. Now, in the first game in this video, it'll be a bit of a taster just to show how good the Yanish Gambit can be against the unprepared opponent with the Rui Lopez. Game two, we'll look at the Yanish Gambit accepted, some tactics, and then I've got, if I do say so myself, a very, very brilliant uh, middle game tactical attack where I get a fantastic, a very beautiful checkmate line. Oh, let's go take a look. Now to start off with, what is the Yanish Gambit? Well, we start with the Rui Lopez opening. And those of you who play it might know, it's e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, so the king's knight opening, and now the immediate Bishop to b5, very combative approach with an immediate threat really to Black's Queen's Knight. Now, if we look at the Lee Chess Community Database, there we go, you can see it's a fantastic opening for white. Pretty much every normal response by Black has white still, gain, still having a fantastic win advantage. So white winning over 50% of the time for quite a gap between black, with one exception. Let's have a look again. You can see that is against f5. Let's switch the view now to black, f5, Yanish Gambit, the win ratio reverses. And in fact, it's the only move by black that does so. He immediately, you know, asking the question, what is white going to do with their e-pawn? Now, in this game, I had a look at my opponent uh, on opening tree uh, during the production of this video to see, did they play the Rui Lopez opening frequently? And they did. It's actually their favorite opening with the white pieces. They pretty much always play it if they're allowed to. It's played over 250 games, and yet they've only seen the Yanish Gambit, I think, seven times, and they lost the majority of those games. It's an unusual response, and it's actually pretty good for black. Now, in this game, my opponent with the white pieces made a mistake. They decided to short castle. And that's a mistake because we can take. We take material, and we now pressure their king's knight, knight on f3, and the problem here is it looks like they've got a bit of a problem. Uh, every response looks like it's covered by one of my pieces. So a little bit similar to the Vienna Gambit Accepted, which you know is one of my favorite opening with the white pieces. Now white here uh, does see, you know, a potential a tactical response. So they have to exchange, so captures, captures, and now it looks like they can capture here. Um, however, you can see it's not really a problem for black. So white has short castled, uh, but they don't really have any development, and they've got no rapid development either, and their knight on e5 is offside. Now, the best move here for black, which I uh, didn't recognize, I think, in the game, is queen to d4. So here, there is a bit of potential check, which is a bit of a problem, you know, with these squares defended by the knight, with the queen on d4, which is actually the critical move for black if, uh, if white decide to play the exchange variation of the Yanish Gambit, and this kind of has, has uh, transposed into the general structure of the exchange variation, queen to d4, very powerful, covering that long dark square diagonal. Now in this game, I decided just to play, play the knight, and that's actually still perfectly fine. Um, it's not so good, you can see back to zero, 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 but black still has a win ratio advantage. This knight is still offside. For 
white to maintain you know that advantage to, to sort of justify why their knight is on e5 and offside they need to immediately push d4 not a difficult move to find but at the same time not a very normal move this makes a lot of sense rook to uh, e1 trying to control the e file but you can see it's a mistake uh, here I, st uh, I still potentially have queen to d4. Instead, I played this move instead. Very tricky with an attack on the uh, with attack on the knight. And the thing here is that it looks like the knight has a problem because it still has this issue that every move it seems like it can go to, uh, and it's the reason I wanted to put queen to d5 is it sort of defends along that diagonal is that it looks like every square the knight can go to within the board is covered by one of my pieces. Now this isn't actually the case, so this is why it's a tricky move as opposed to a brilliant move. The correct move for white's knight is to move to f3. It looks like it's being you know, attacked by the pawn, but it actually isn't because there is a discovered pin. So you know, the knight basically has like a one move respite. However, they spent, oh, let me have a look. They spent uh, a good, goodly time, half a minute, thinking of this move, and they actually play knight to g4. <laughs> and this is a, a mistake of continuity. And I think we've all experienced this, where we sort of look, looks like one of our pieces are trapped. We look at each possible move over and over, and then through the sheer will of just wishful thinking, we suddenly uh, believe that, oh, this move works. Of course, it doesn't work because it's attacked twice, defended only once. So, uh, so my uh, light square bishop captures, and here, of course, white <laughs> realizes their blunder and opts to resign. Good game, GG. All right, so that's a bit of a taster to show how quickly things can go awry, go just really, really wrong for the player with the white pieces playing the Rui Lopez. Uh, let's have a look at the next game. As mentioned before, uh, the opponent ex accepts the uh, Yanish Gambit in this game. So e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, the Rui Lopez bishop, the Yanish Gambit, and here they accept. And for those you know, very similar to a reverse uh, Vienna Gambit accepted. We push forward the e pawn, and just like before, same sort of uh, uh, same sort of logic. It looks like everywhere that the knight can go on the board is covered, and looks like they might need to go back. And this is exactly the idea, the tactical idea with pushing the e pawn into Vienna game Vienna Gambit accepted. We deflect the opponent's e-pawn, push our e-pawn forward with an attack on the king's knight. Now here is where things are a little bit different. White has the advantage that they got to go first. So when we play the Vienna Gambit, we go first. Here the opponent gets to go first, and the difference here is that a tactic which is a mistake in the Vienna Gambit accepted, which is trying to pin the e-pawn to my king. In this position, this is the correct move. In the Vienna Gambit accepted, this is a mistake. Now, the opponent here probably has some experience with the Vienna Gambit accepted, particularly given how, uh, how popular it is on chess social media. And so they probably thought retreating with the knight is the best move. That's what they did. It's actually a bit of a mistake. Gives an advantage to black. Black is immediately better here. The reason why, let's go back, why this is better is that yes, we can unpin this way, but after, uh, after, uh, after trades like this, white can now move their knight forward, keeping it on the board. So this is the difference with white having the ability to go first in this position. But as I said, uh, they didn't play this here. They retreated their knight, and now uh, that allows me to just develop. Now, uh, I didn't sort of recognize that the best move here was actually an immediate aggressive move 
queen a g5 which basically gives a fork of the g's two pawn and also white's f5 pawn you know the uh, somewhat you know somewhat uh, forward pawn um well, that's the move I should play. And, you know, for the next time I play the Yanish Gambit, I actually don't get the Yanish Gambit accepted very often. It's not the most common response by white. I'll know that. However, developing the knight here is perfectly good as well. However, you can see, back to 0, 0, 0. And the reason for that is, again, white got to go first, and they can now immediately push uh, some uh, some... You know they can sort of trade things down and that actually leads them to be in a balanced position so here they put some tension in uh you can see i should have you know tried to attack their bishop but i thought this was fine and it actually is okay though white does gain a little bit of an advantage they should immediately try to capture down as i said before but they want to keep the tension that's a mistake back to basically zero 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 in fact back slightly ahead because i now to get to develop holding the tension and giving an extra defender on e4. Here they try to do this. The best move here is actually to remove this piece from being able to move by giving the pin. I didn't quite see that. However, attacking their bishop is okay. They probably should have traded, but now here I get to chase the bishop. Again here, I don't play the most accurate move, which is actually I need to pin because there are now two attackers on the uh, on the d5 pawn and of course i only have one defender while this knight is pinned to my queen somewhat sort of tricky position really need to calculate it properly uh, again the next time i play this position i'll be a little bit more aware of that now in this game what i ended up doing was i thought it would be good to get rid of that bishop so i leapt my knight forward with the idea that i was going to trade that stockfish causes a mistake and it's a mistake because there are those two attackers but white must basically must take that pawn with uh with the bishop they don't they don't see that i think they wanted to keep the tension and now i can liquidate that bishop great move for me and you can see substantial advantage now to black and in this game i pretty much outplay my opponent in the middle game so captures and here i can immediately start to sort of uh, cash things out in uh in the center i didn't quite want to do that you know while that's pinned and while my king was still in the center so you know i think this still potentially makes sense that's pinned they take i can take back this way they can't trade this way at the moment they develop a piece that's fine i now short castles and with having lost that f pawn my rook now controls a semi-open f file and this is one of the ideas in the Yanish game one of the tactical ideas that once uh, the f pawn goes away if you manage to short castle uh, to the king side your rook controls that f file very very similar against uh, again to the vienna game and the vienna gambit all right here they decide to short castle as well now here i decide to push my queen to e8 now already in this position i wanted to you know, take you know that knight out of the pin and also potentially give an access to my queen to the uh, g6 and also the h5 squares potentially future attacking potentials on the king as we'll see this ends up being a good move uh, in the future so even though it wasn't wasn't stockfish's favorite move tactically setting up future possible tactical opportunities is rarely a serious mistake all right now they decide to trade and here captures once again a pawn on e4 with an attack on a knight of the opponent on f3 and this once again we see the opponent making a mistake so it looks like the knight has to move number of potential opportunities so could go here could go here could go here could go here can go here can't go here can't go here their pieces block now knight to h4 is actually a fine move but looks like it's moving to the edge of the ball it doesn't look quite right you know a knight to e1 all the way to the back rank again doesn't look like it's potentially the best move even though stockfish says that is a good move 
knight backwards to d2. Again, backward knight's moves doesn't look quite right. Potentially could be traded. So here, obviously can't go here, you know, lost right away. Very natural for white to play knight to d4, which is what they did, but it's a mistake. As I said, knight e1 and knight h4 was their uh, best move for the knight. Now, the engine for a number of moves reckons that trading their bishop for my knight is the best move. That's a bit difficult to see. I would even argue it's semi-inhuman because it looks like I just get to develop, you know, to get to play a rook lift, um, you know, allowing my rook to potentially get an attack on their king's position. So that's quite a difficult move to see. So ignoring that move, they have to move their knight. That seems sensible. Those two seem harder to see. You can see it's a mistake. Can you see why it's a mistake? Did you see it? What's the best response for black? Well, we now have a rook to d8, and it's a pin. And it's a problematic pin because we now follow up with c5. And the important thing here is, is that there's no way that white can get out of this pin, like move a piece that unpins that knight while having the knight defended. Simply, the queen cannot move to a square that defends the knight without remaining in the pin. That is why it's a mistake. They tried to you know, develop the rook, makes sense, I suppose, but now c5, knight is pinned, place pressure on the pinned piece, need to keep these, you know, these, these tactics in mind, and effectively, after that, we take the knight. And basically, we practically take the knight for free. All right, white now tries to make a battery. I suppose that makes sense, you know, but now I'd find a very, very tricky move. So, you know, it looks like there's a potential attack there, but what I saw, Stockfish doesn't think it's the best move, initially anyway, Bishop back to d uh, to d6. You can see Stockfish thinks, you know, the more direct queen to e5 with an attack on their bishop. That seems to make sense, I suppose. However, I think that's a tricky move and it's still very, very winning. Now, can you see what my idea is here? Can you see it? All right. Now, white must play g3, but they don't. They play very sensible looking. You can see that was their only good move. Very sensible looking uh, rook, uh, rook uh, fd1, you know, trying to again control the, uh, trying to control one of the central files, makes sense. At lower depth, Stockfish doesn't call this, you know, a blunder. In fact, he thinks it's quite kind of okay. Look at that. See, you can see barely worse. However, at high depth, there is a checkmate, a false line of checkmate, no longer than 17 moves, which is why I call this a blunder. Now, the next move here, again, Stockfish at low depth thinks that this move, uh, d3, is the best move. It doesn't even see the best move. The best move, you might have guessed, we're gonna start a Greek gift sacrifice. All the ingredients are there. There, with check, knight can leap forward. The g4 square here is uncontested, making the Greek gift sacrifice very, very powerful. There's another check. Queen moved earlier, has access to h the h file, h, uh, h5, again, uncontested square, very, very powerful. This is the best move. Now, as I said, um, the at low depth, Stockfish doesn't recognize that this is the beginning of a mating line. So obviously then it can't give it a brilliant move, but I think this is pretty brilliant. Captures, knight jumps forward with check. See, still doesn't see the, the false mate. And now queen here, and now with this queen move, Stockfish can see it's getting worse and worse for white. Again, still quite can't quite see the line of checkmate, but recognizes that this is a brilliant move because I sacrificed the knight, but this is false line of checkmate. Now, 
I think the best move here for white is actually a very inhuman looking move. Queen to c7 to block, to defend that square. Very hard to see. Look, they just take, uh, take the rook. Check. King forced to move out of the way. Now, in this position, I now don't see the, uh, the most accurate line of mate. So the quickest mate you can see is mate in two is to give a check. Now the king now must go here. That's their only legal move. My pawns completely block off the, uh, the third rank for white's king. That square defended by the knight and so a rook F2 captures a pawn and that is mate. I didn't actually see that uh, in the game and so here instead what I uh, what I saw and I thought for a while I couldn't see that mate. I thought maybe there was a mate there but I wasn't sure but I saw a very very nice royal fork and the knight is immortal. There's a check. White's king must move because that pawn is pinned to the king. So a royal fork, check, king moves, captures the queen, and here, rather than taking back, white decided they wanted to run their king. Um, first, they decided to potentially try to move my, my queen with attack. Now, I respect that, you know, that sort of very, very aggressive attack. Doesn't work. Here, pawn forward, very beautiful now. Check. King tries to run. Check. Captures. King must run, and now queen captures the bishop. The king is trapped in a cage. Queen captures bishop on c7. Mate. Good game. GG. The big takeaway from this game is to try the Yanish Gambit against White's Rui Lopez opening. If you like tactical games, this opening will often result in fun open tactical positions. Even better, it is statistically the most successful and winning line for black against the Rui Lopez. I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.